this Tuesday night, amen. Glory. Our Bible study evening, amen. Can we just give God a praise, Tuesday, amen? Because truly, He is worthy, uh, amen. Uh, He's been wonderful. He's been kind. He's been amazing. He's been so worthy, amen. He's been kind. He's been amazing. He's been so worthy, amen. He's been so worthy, amen. With the people of God, with the saints now. We thank you now, God, for being so wonderful and so kind and so amazing unto us. We pray now by your spirit, God, that you are granted to us in this time, God, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your power, your might, God. Let the anointing of the living Lord not only fall fresh, God, but come on in and occupy our hearts, God. We're asking now, God, that you open our eyes that we may see, open our understanding that we may receive the knowledge and the wisdom of the Almighty God. We love you, God. We appreciate you as we give you all glory, honor, and praise. For us in Jesus' name, we do pray this prayer that the people of God say amen, amen, amen and amen. Glory be to God. I got in a little late today, amen. I was at the job and at the last minute somebody needed something, amen. Glory. Have mercy. They was kind of new to the home front because anybody else probably would have told them, you know, that's his Bible study tonight. You might have to wait to get that, but <laughs> but to God be the glory. Amen. Uh, before we get started tonight, because we will be back in the book of, of Proverbs. Amen. Glory be to God. Excuse me, y'all. My watch is ringing, but it's just going to have to wait too. Amen. But in the book of Proverbs, amen, we're in the 24th chapter, and tonight we will... Uh, um, attempt to complete the last half of the 24th chapter, amen, 24th chapter of Proverbs. But before we go on tonight, amen, I have to give a shout out to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because today is my wife's birthday, first amen. lady's birthday, amen. I'm not going to tell you how old she is, that, that's, that's her own business, amen, but, <laughs> but we just want to say happy birthday and we pray that God will bless you with many, many more, amen. Somebody say, it's your day. Amen. amen. It's your day. Amen. To remember uh, that God gave you another. Amen. Well, saints, in the 24th chapter of Proverbs, amen, we've made it down to verse number 19. Amen. And, and remember, I said when we get to this portion of Proverbs, the writer has began to talk uh, with two or three verses uh, to explain things, to bring things together. Amen. So, so here we are in the 24th chapter of of Proverbs in verse 19, the writer tells us, fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at, at the wicked, for there should be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So here the writer begins to tell us, don't worry. Amen. Glory about the evil man. Uh, remember last week in the first part of the text, uh, he told us not to be envious, amen, and not to keep company with the evil man, amen. with the wicked man, amen. And, and he comes back here in the 19th verse, he said, don't even worry about them, amen. A lot of times, we spend a lot of time on stuff that, you know, it ain't worth worrying about. And, and so here, he simply tells us, fret not thyself because of evil men, don't don't, don't, don't get, as they say, don't get your uh, uh, fellas in the fan. Amen. You know, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about evil folk. Tell somebody, say, evil folk going to be evil. Yes, they will. Amen. So since they're going to be evil, holy folk ought to what? Be holy. Amen. Amen. He's afraid not thyself because of evil men. And he said, neither be thy envious at the wicked. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Tell somebody, say, don't want their stuff. Jesus. Amen. Don't don't want their stuff. God got God got stuff for you. Amen. He got well, he, he got things out there that he wants you to have. You ain't got to be envious of especially the the evil person. Mm -hmm. Amen. So so he gives us this uh um uh, a couple things that as the uh, children of God that we ought to do. Amen. He said we ought not be worried. Amen. Uh, of the evil person and we ought not be envious of the wicked. Amen. Uh, the, the scholar Garrett said this. He said, the translation, do not fret, is too mild. Mm -hmm. He said, do not get yourself infuriated over evildoers is more accurate. Those who love the truth are naturally enraged by the in, in front of those who promote or practice godless, godless behavior. Amen. 
Oh, glory, hammer. So, so tell somebody, say, don't worry about uh, those being evil. Amen. God, God's got you. Amen. You, you just need to stay where you are, and that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. He goes on in the 20th verse, he said, for there should be no reward to the evil man. Mm. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Candle. Amen. Glory. Hammer. He said, there's no reward for the wicked. Amen. Why? Because whatever they get on this side is all they're going to get. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Jesus. Have mercy. Amen. Ain't, ain't going to be nothing for them what? To look forward to. Amen. Because mm -hmm. once, it, once it's over for them, it's over. That There is no reward for them. And there's a reward, but in the aspect of, of, of good things. Amen. Hell is not a, a, a good reward. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory. Jesus. Have mercy. But, but he said there's no reward for them because once this life is done, that, that's it for them. And all the good that they were going to supposedly have, they done had it. Jesus. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. So he tells us, don't don't worry about them. Um, don't don't fret it. Uh, don't be envious of them. Amen. He said, uh, not only uh, for there for there should be no reward to the evil man. He said, but the candle of the wicked shall be put wow. out. Uh, uh, when you really look at that, Amen. In verse twenty, he's using a a, 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 a idiom. Amen. And that's an expression and uses of a language that is particular to uh, itself, either in having a meaning that cannot be derived from the conjoined meaning of its elements. For, for example, we will often sometimes we'll say it's up in the air, meaning what? We undecided. Amen. Or, mm -hmm. or we'll say it's raining cats and dogs simply to, to say, hey, it, it's raining hard. Amen. We'll say a uh, uh, seeing in light, meaning what? Somebody just coming to the realization of what it really means. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so even in that, he's saying that uh, this is one of those things when he says the candle of the wicked shall be put out. Because in that language back in the day, uh, how the people spoke, amen, that meant that uh, all future generations of the person would, that, that, that their name would, would end. Right. There, there will be no more descendants of that person. Oh, Why? Because, because they, they've done wickedly. And, 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 and so therefore, they're going to be what? Cut off. Amen. So, so that's what it meant uh, at the uh, in the twentieth verse of the twenty fourth chapter of Proverbs. Amen. In verses twenty one and twenty two, the writer goes on and he says, um, "My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change." He said, "For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both?" Amen. So in verses 21, 21, he said, my son, fear thou the Lord and the king. He says the Lord first because what? The Lord is above all. Amen. amen. Glory. Have me remember back in this day during Solomon's time, amen, uh, the king uh, had authority. He, he was the ruling force, what? In the land. Amen. But, but even the king had a king over him. And, and that king was God. So, so he's saying to us as children, he says, uh, uh, fear the Lord and, and the king, meaning fear the Lord and fear the authority that's been put above you, even on, on this earth. He said, but make sure you put first things first. And that's the fact that God comes above all things. A -a Amen. Glory. Have mercy. The writer Poole, he said it like this here. He said, he puts God before the king because God is to be served in the first place. And our obedience is to be giver to kings only in sub, uh, subordination to, to God. He said, not in those things which are contrary to the will and command of God, as is manifest both from plain scriptures as Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 29, and from the judgment and the practice of wise and sober heathens. Mm. Amen. So, so he's simply saying, even for us as the people of God today, amen, uh, even though we do have uh, uh, an authority body in, in, in the land, uh, uh, they do not supersede or override what the word of God says. So somebody said, that's your first priority. That's your first the priority. word of God, what God says, his judgment, his statutes, amen. The, that's your first priority. Priority. And if something is contrary to the, the to the word of God, the will of God, tell somebody like, you better go with God. <laughs> you 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 better ride with God. Amen. To God be the glory. So my son, my daughter, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change. 
Amen. And when he talks about this giving to change, amen, he's saying don't associate with those that are given to change in the aspect that those who want to start a, a revolution because they don't like the way things are. He said, you be careful because uh, authority has been put in place. The problem with authority is that when it's misused, it hurts everybody. Mm. When it's misused, it hurts everybody. everybody. And when it's misused, it's, it causes uh, 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 envy and strife and, and all these other hatreds and things that, that come up that want to cause what? A revolution that wants to cause a change. Somebody say, if you're in leadership, if you're in leadership just do right. Jesus. Just do the right thing. So he said, my son, fear thou the, the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change those who who want to uh, overthrow amen he said he said be careful of those he said for their calamity shall rise suddenly and who knoweth the ruin of them in other words the uh, the revolution often finds that their calamity will rise suddenly and they can br bring great ruin what uh with their revolution amen mm -hmm. so so that's why those in in leadership must uh uh, uh glory have mercy do right by do right by the people, amen. Do right by the land. Do Just do right, amen. amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, to God be the glory. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 24, chapter, uh, verses 23 and 23 through 25. The writer goes on, he said, These things also belong to the wise. Glory. Have mercy. These things also belong to the wise uh oh y'all glory have mercy he, he he's given us a lot of things that belong to the to the wise amen and, and he's about to give us some more amen somebody say he about to give us some more amen glory have mercy he, he about to give us some more he said first of all these things uh also belong to the wise uh because early in the chapter he's given us some things that belong to what the wise, amen, glory be to God. He said, it is not, he's, he, so he starts, he said, these things also belong to the wise. I've given you some, so let me give you some more. He said, these things uh, also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Uh-oh, he said, it's not good to have respect of person. That, uh, that's another thing, somebody said, that's another thing the, uh, uh, the wise can can take, amen. The, the, another thing they can add to their list amen and and since we're talking about that let me give you eight reasons uh respect of persons is not good amen uh reason number one it breaks god's law uh -oh. amen you can find that in deuteronomy uh chapter 1 verse 17 also in chapter 16 verse 19 all right the second reason why respect of persons is not good it's unlike god Amen. You can find that in 2 Samuel, the 14th chapter, the 14th verse. Also in Romans, the 2nd chapter, uh, uh, verse number 11. Another reason why a respect of persons is not good. Reason number three, because it's sinful. You can find that in James, the 2nd chapter, verses 9 and 10. Uh, reason number four, unjust to subjects of government and creates anarchy. You can find that in Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 8. The fifth reason, it breaks down respect for law and order and creates hatred. You can find that in Proverbs right here, the 24th chapter, verses 23 and 24, which we are going over now. Um, um, reason number six, it demonstrates judges are not qualified to sit in judgment. That's Proverbs, the 28th chapter, verse 21, which we'll get to later on as we go through Proverbs. And then uh, reason number seven would be it encourages and condones sin. You can find that here in Proverbs, the 24th uh, uh, chapter, verse 24, which we're going to read. Also, uh, Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse number five. Also in 1 Kings uh, uh the 21st chapter, I believe, and in Michael, the third chapter, verses 1 through 11. And the last reason why respect a person is not good is reason number eight. It's contrary to the gospel. And you can find that in the book of James, the second chapter. Amen. 
Amen. So here the writer is in the 23rd uh, verse, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th verse, he says, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons. Amen. Glory be to God. Uh, he that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the, the people curse. Nations shall, shall abhor him. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Mm. Hey, glory be to God. Amen. So, so here we are. An, uh, another thing you need to put into, well, let's, let's go over this first. He says, um, it is not good to, to um, have respect of persons in judgment, to have partiality. Amen. He said, the, um, the writer is simply telling us, uh, it's not good. It's not godly. Um, it's it's sinful. It condones and encourages sin when we do that. Amen. Uh, the writer Trapp said this to show partiality and judgment. Hebrew to know faces, to regard not so much the matter as the man, to hear persons speak and not causes, to judge not according to truth and equity, but according to opinion and appearance, to fear or favor. Amen. Glory. That's what it means when it talks about to show partiality in judgment. Amen. He said it's not a good thing. Tell somebody don't don't do it. Amen. Do it. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Truth is truth and a lie is a lie. Amen. As a Christian, we speak truth regardless. Amen. 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 He goes on and he says in this verse, he said, He that saith unto the wicked, thou art righteous. Him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. In other words, amen, uh, we are the righteous, and so we don't call the wicked righteous, amen? We don't call the wicked righteous. We call it what it is. If it's evil, what? It's evil. Amen. If you're doing evil, you, you, you're wicked, amen? We, we're not going to say you righteous when we know you are wicked, amen? Glory be to God. That's another thing to what that the Christian does not do. We don't call the wicked righteous. We call him what he is. The Bible said, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him. If you call somebody this wicked righteous, you know, people going to say, wait a minute, what's wrong with you? Because what? People know uh, right from wrong. They know evil from righteousness. They, they know wicked when they see it. Amen. And if you're going along with the wicked saying that they the righteous, uh, the Bible simply says, uh, him shall the people what? Curse. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nations shall abhor him, meaning they shall hate him. Amen. Glory be to God. This is what should not be said to the wicked. In a wise, more society, the people will curse someone with such confused more judgment and the nations will what? Not like them, will hate them. Amen. It says, it is a mark of the folly of our present age that many monstrous examples of evil or wickedness today are told you are righteous. Oh my. He said, this proverb describes the working of a culture wiser than our present culture. Mm. Oh, glory, have mercy. He said, those who rebuke the wicked will have Delight, Amen. Oh. Glory, Amen. That's that's found in the in Jesus. the next section in verse number twenty five. He said, "But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a Amen. good blessing shall come upon him." Amen. Glory, have mercy. If you go along with the wicked, somebody say say you're gonna be cursed uh, with them. Amen. But but when you do the right thing, you call wickedness what it is. Amen. And you stand for that which is Right. Uh, uh, tell somebody, say, uh, uh, there shall be delight. Jesus. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Amen. Tell somebody, say, if you want the good blessing, just stand for right. Stand Ooh, for righteousness if, if you want the good blessing. Amen. Uh, according to the word of God, the 25th verse of the 24th chapter of Proverbs, but to them that rebuke him, shall be delight, rebuke who? The wicked, amen. And a good blessing shall come 
upon them. Amen. Glory. Hammers. We see it in our present day world. We're seeing a lot of things that people are calling good because we are on this thing of in, well, inclusiveness and, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 equal rights and so on and so forth. Uh, Y'all can have equal rights. Y'all can have e e inclusiveness and all this other stuff. But when it comes down to the word of God, ain't nothing you're going to say going to make what somebody doing against the word of God right. Oh, God. Amen. I mean, Amen. Uh, I, I know people probably don't like this, but it, it is true. If if you choose to be a homosexual, a lesbian, and, and all these other things, if you choose to be them, amen, glory be to God, according to the word of God, it's not right. Amen. So as a preacher, uh oh, glory, have mercy. I can't speak for nobody else. I'm going to speak for me tonight. As a preacher, I won't condone it. Amen. Glory. God. Have mercy. It, it goes against the word of God. It goes against what God stands for. It goes against what God says. Amen. Amen. And if I'm going to choose anything, I'm going to choose the word of God. Amen. You can hate me. You can dislike me. Amen. But I tell you what, I'd rather be in heaven with God than to be in hell with you. Jesus. Oh, Glo God. Glory be to God. Right, Amen. Uh, somebody said, we got to make a stand. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the stand is we stand for righteousness. If it goes against the word of God, it's just wrong. Amen. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. And, and I'm reading what the word of God says. Amen. Uh, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that said unto the wicked, thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. Nations shall abhor abhor him but to them that rebuke him shall be delight and a good blessing shall come upon them oh amen I'm, I'm looking for the good blessing because i'm going to stay within the will of god within the word of god right is right and wrong is right, wrong man. amen there's there's no other way to call it amen glory be to amen. god uh proverbs the 20 uh fourth chapter verse number 20 Six. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. Before I go to that, amen. I had some other notes I, I put down. Amen. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm give you ten other things for the, the wise. Amen. We we're gonna see them in the in the scripture, but I'm gonna go on give them to you. Amen. Ten other things for the wise. In verse 23, have no respect of person. Amen. Um in verse 24, do not call the wicked righteous. Amen. In verse number 25, rebuke. The wicked. Mm -hmm. In verse number 26, which we'll get ready to read, I'll I, I tell you, I'm going to do it like this here. Amen. We're going to go ahead on and, and read the verses. So so you've gotten three other things, uh, three other things for the wise. You've got have no respect of persons. you got do not call the wicked righteous in verse 24. And in verse 25, uh, you have rebuke the wicked. Amen. In verse 26, the writer goes on and he says, every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Amen. Did, did somebody say this is another idiom? Right. Amen. Right. Glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. He said the proper response to a question or a difficult problem is always welcome to the wise. Why? We think of the many occasions when Jesus Christ was, pre was presented with difficult questions, yet always gave. A right answer. Mm -hmm. yeah, glory. Have mercy. Somebody said he gave a right answer. That, right answer. That, 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 that he did. Amen. Uh, the right answer comes from the, the lips, just like a friendly and welcoming kiss. Amen. Uh, Clark said, shall treat him with affection and respect. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, this idiom, uh, which means doing homage to the man that is wise enough to give right answers. Amen. That, that's what verse number 26 is all about somebody say giving the right answer G giving the godly answer amen glory be to god so another thing that uh, uh the wise have been given uh, uh 10 other things for the wise in verse 26 tell somebody give the right answer the right answer amen give the right answer amen well pastor how do i give the right answer somebody said meditate on your word oh, god. Glory, amen. Word. Stay in amen. your word, amen. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, amen. And tell somebody, say, no God. No God. Amen. That, that's how you give what? 
the right answer. The Bible tells us we ought to study to show ourselves approved what? Unto God. You know what I'm saying? Too many times we're trying to prove stuff to people, but we ain't got to prove nothing to people. You, the, the word of God proves itself. Amen. You just got to study it and, and know it. Amen. So that we can what? Rightly divide what? The, the word, word of truth. truth. Amen. So, so this is just another thing that we have been given as the wise. Somebody say number four was give right answers. Mm -hmm. Amen. In verse number 27 of the 24th chapter of Proverbs, he said, Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Oh. Amen. Glory. Hammers, in verse 27, he's telling us, make plans for work. Uh-oh, glory. Jesus. Have mercy. Amen. Somebody said, make plans for work. Amen. And not only make plans for work, he said, but build after the plans, what, are complete. Jesus. Amen. Don't build with, with halfway plans. Tell somebody, uh, uh, plan it to completion mm -hmm. and then what? Build. build. Amen. Glory be to God. So here we are in the in verse 27. He gives us he gives us two other things for the wise. Tell somebody to say, make plans for work. Make plans. Amen. And, and build after plans. Mm -hmm. Are what complete? Hey, glory be to God. Build out the plans are complete. Amen. Um, it says right here uh, on my notes. I said the idea is that before a house is built, proper preparations must be made. Amen. The field and the ground must be ready. Uh, wisdom tells us that the work should be done with proper planning in the proper order. Amen. It's the outside work. Uh, the the Scholar Walty said this, this would include plowing the land, planting gardens and orchards so that it produces its fruit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and the afterward, build your house. He says, some want to skip right away to the building without preparing the field. Amen. This foolishness will not be blessed. Do the preparation work first and then afterwards Build your house. Amen. Jesus. Glory. Hammer. That, that will be just like us. Amen. Saying we're going to go build a church down there on zero Willis Drive and, and we ain't got no plans. We just going to go out there and say, put it right there. Put what right there? We ain't even got the plans. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Somebody say, uh, uh, plan the work first. Uh -huh. Amen. To completion. And then go what? Build. Amen. Glory. Somebody say, that's, that's wisdom. Yeah, Amen. That, wisdom. Say that, 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 Amen. That's being wise. Right there, amen. Uh, uh, on this 27th verse, amen, the, the scholar Bridges said this. He said, preparation for Solomon's magnificent temple were made before his house was built. Amen. Glory. The spiritual house is similarly made of materials that have been prepared and fitted and so grow into a holy temple in the Lord. Uh, he referenced Ephesians, the second chapter, mm -hmm. verses 21 through twenty. Two, amen. Tell somebody, say, God has already, amen, spiritually uh, uh, blessed you to be fitted well, with everything you need. Amen. amen. So somebody say, the plans have been made. The plans are already amen. Made. Now you got to build what? Towards the, the plans. Amen. If God said, put on the whole armor, somebody say, don't put on half of it. You got to put on all of it. Why? Because the plan is for you to be fully covered. Fully armored, fully prepared, and not halfway. Amen. Somebody said, God already got the plans. Got the plan. Amen. We just got to what? Uh, build to it, grow to it. Amen. So that the house can be complete. Uh, the scholar Kidner said this As in a rural economy, well worked fields justify and nourish, and nourish the farmhouse. So a well-ordered life in things material and immaterial should be established before marriage. Uh oh, glory, hammer! I, I hope some young folks heard oh, that. God. Amen. Uh, 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 prepare the work before marriage. Amen. So that when you go into marriage, what? Hey, you can build the house. Amen. We want to build a house before we get married. For I tell you, boy, it it it, it, it could be something else these oh, days. Amen. Man. Glory, have mercy. Amen. But but. Uh, the bottom line is that these are uh, another thing, uh, uh, two other things that we as the wise must take hold of. And that's the fact that we make plans for work and then we build after the plans are complete. Amen. Somebody say that's wisdom. Amen. Uh, Proverbs, the 24th chapter, verse 
27. In Proverbs the 24th chapter, verse 28 and 29. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, we got three other things that the writer uh, gives us uh, when it comes to the wise. In verse number 28, it says, Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not without lips. Mm -hmm. And verse 29, he says, Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Oh, glory. Have mercy. Amen. So we find here in verses 28, amen, uh, uh, do not be a witness against our neighbor without cause. He said, we should only speak against someone if there is good and righteous cause to do so. Mm. Amen. Oh, glory. Have mercy. He said, we often speak ill of others to entertain others in ourselves. Jesus. Uh, 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 whether you know it or not, somebody say, that's a sin. That's a sin. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Ooh, the, the scholar Jesus. Bridges, he said this. He said, profit is the bait to the thief, lust to the adulterer, revenge to the murderer. He said, but it is difficult to say what advantage the witness gains from testifying against his neighbor. He said, the allurement of this sin is the same as Satan himself feels. That is, the love of sin for its own sake. Mm. Glory. Hammer. Tell somebody, say, watch what you say watch. against your neighbor. Amen. Don't bring something against your neighbor without cause. Amen. Oh, glory. Have mercy. Oh, have mercy. So we find here in verse number 28, amen, we find do not witness against a neighbor without cause. That, that's another thing for the wise. Amen. That, that's number seven for the wise. Amen. And he says also in verse 28, uh, do not deceive with the lips. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, tell somebody, say, just don't be a liar. Amen. Mm -hmm. don't, don't say one thing and do another. Amen. Uh, uh, would you deceive with, with your lips? He said, when we speak against others without cause, we usually exaggerate or color the truth, Ooh, making it a deception. Uh oh, glory. <laughs> Have mercy. Amen. Somebody say that, 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 that that's deceiving lips there. That, that's something that the wise should not have. Uh, somebody say that's number eight. Mm, Jesus. Uh, we shouldn't have deceitful lips. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. And he goes on, the writer says here uh, um, in the latter part of the verse, he says, say not in verse number 29. He says, say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. He says, I will render to the man according to his work. Amen. Glory. This is what wisdom and grace tell us not to say. Jesus. Amen. We should not return evil for evil. Uh, you can find that in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse number 15. He said, just because someone has spoken evil or lies against us does not mean that we should speak evil and lies against them. Man, oh, tell Jesus somebody, we're, we're not in that age of tit for tat. We're, we're not in the age of eye for an eye, two for two. Tell somebody, say, Jesus made it, uh, uh, made a change. Amen. Yes, Glory. Have mercy. And we must abide by what? The change. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, we do not have deceitful lips. Amen. And, and in verse number 29, we do not repay evil for evil. Amen. Somebody tell somebody, say, that's another thing for the wise. Yes, yes. We do not repay evil for evil. Amen. Glory be to God. Ah, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Well, moving right along. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, I'm going to read what the scholar Trapp said about verses 20. He said, uh, nothing is more natural than revenge of wrongs. Amen. He said, and the world approves it as right temper, true touch, as to put up wrongs is hell, cowardice, and unmanliness. He said, but we have not so learned Christ. Amen. Uh, tell somebody, say, that's not, Jesus doesn't do that. Amen. Oh. Glory. He doesn't render evil for evil. Amen. If if that was the case, amen. Glory. Have mercy. We all would be paying what? A price. Amen. Jesus. But tell somebody the price already been paid mm -hmm. 
for me. Amen. So from verse 29, we learn uh, another thing for the wise is that what? We should not repay evil for evil. Amen. So, so that gives us uh, nine things uh, before we get to the, the last portion of the verses. Amen. Because verses 30 through 34, with which will uh, take us through um, chapter 24. Amen. Talks about the lazy man. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. And simply stating, it said, profit by observing the lazy man. That's another thing Jesus. the wise ought to be able to do. Profit uh, by observing the lazy man. So let me give you the, the other nine and then we're going to talk about number 10. Uh, uh, 10 other things that the wise should have in verse 23. We should have no respect of person. In verse 24, we should not call the wicked righteous. In verse 25, we should rebuke the wicked. In verse 26, we should give right answers. In verse 27, we should make plans for the work. In verse 27, we should also build after the plans are complete. After the plans are complete. After the plans are complete. Not halfway doing it, but after the plans are complete. complete. Amen. In verse 28, uh, uh, we do not witness against a neighbor without cause. In Amen. verse 28, we should also not have uh, deceiving lips. And in verse 29, we should not repay evil for evil. That's in uh, Proverbs the 24th chapter. Amen. Verses 23 through 29. Well, in verse number 30, amen. Glory be to God. In verse number 30, it simply says, I went by the field of the slothful. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and, and needles, uh, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thou want as an armed man. Mm. Okay, glory be to God. Amen. Well, Pastor, what are you saying? Amen. Well, first of all, in verse 30, it gives us a personal description of the lazy man. Amen. Uh, he is slowful and ignorant, <laughs> and without courage or mental powers to make power decisions, about work and to carry them out. Amen. That was in verse number 30. I see he said, I went by the field of the slopher and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. He didn't understand what the hey, look at here, uh, winter is coming. I must what? Prepare for the winter. Amen. I'm gonna prepare also for the, the season that's coming. Amen. Glory. But nevertheless, amen. In verse 30 and 31, we find uh, his circumstances. We talking about the lazy man circumstances, amen. He has a vineyard and a farm capable of producing his own food and prospering, prospering him, amen. So, so his his circumstances that he has everything he need what to to supply what his need. He has everything he need to even prosper in his own life. We find this in verses 30 and 31. It said, I went by the field of the slopher. So we know he got a field. Got a field. And by the vineyard of the man, uh, void of understanding. So he, he got a field. He got a vineyard. He said, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and, and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Somebody said he just ain't did any work. Ain't work. Amen. He didn't let it grow up. Amen. He he's not tilted the ground. He he's not put the work in. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. And it ain't the world we live in today. Folk don't want to put the work in, but they want the benefits. Oh my God. Help us, Pastor. Uh, help us All right, today. Pastor. Amen. And, and and so in verses 30 and 31, we find his circumstances. In verse 31, we also find the condition of his form. It is grown over with thorns and nettles and the fences are broken down. The whole place is in ruin, a ruined state 
through long neglect. neglect. Amen. Oh, glory. Have mercy. Amen. It's sort of like the Christian life. Amen. You can't neglect the things of God, and then when the storm comes, you, you, oh, oh, Lord, have oh, mercy. Pastor, yeah. it. uh, it's hard to go through when you have neglected what you're supposed to to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory. Right, Have mercy. It's, 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 oh, it, it might sound silly, but it's like you got an interview. Amen. And, and glory be to God. You want to look your best on the interview, but you ain't washed no clothes. You ain't washed no hair. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm saying? You you ne neglected the things what, that'll make you look good in the interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so in verse 31, we found the condition of his uh, of the form. Somebody say it's, it, it, it's been neglected. Uh -huh. Amen. In verse 30 and verse 33, we find the cause. The cause is he is too lazy to prune the vineyard, <laughs> clean up, plow, and, and plant his field, or to repair the fences and the residence. You know, it told you that the fences, what, oh, had been oh, broken God. down. Oh, oh. Glory. I mean, he spends his time, uh, in verse 33, he spends yes, his time yes. in sleep. Huh? And neglect yeah. of essential <laughs> what uh, duties. Yeah, yeah. glory. Oh, Have yeah. mercy. So, so uh, somebody say number ten. Number ten is learning from what uh, uh, profit by observing the lazy man. Amen. Uh, the lazy man does what? He neglects the things that that are of most important. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Well, in verse thirty three, he neglect. It shows the neglect of essential. Duties in verse 34, it gives us the result. What's the result? Amen. In verse 34, amen. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thou want as an armed man. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. It's an absolute poverty as one who travels and has spent his last money, and as one who becomes impoverished through warfare. That's what you find in verse 34. Also in verse 34. 2 and 34, it said the lesson learned. Amen. In 32, it says, let me go back and read verse 32. In verse 32, it says, Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Oh Amen. Glory. Have mercy. In verse 34, it says, So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed Man, amen, glory. The lesson learned in verse 32 and 34, uh, uh, to follow the example of the slothful is to come to the same end. If you neglect the duties, amen, glory, have mercy. Hey, somebody say, I can't neglect them, pastor, amen. Jesus. Say, God has given me a field to work, amen. Yes, he He's given me a vineyard, God. what, to work, amen. So I can't neglect the vineyard, amen. I, I got to plant, amen. I got to plow. I got to get the ground ready. Look here. Now, when I say get the ground ready, I'm, oh, glory, hammer. Tell somebody, we ain't talking about somebody else's ground right oh now. God. We we talking about the ground of your own heart, amen. Jesus. You got to get your heart ready, what, well, to receive the word of God. You got to get your heart ready to what, uh, for the work. You got to get your heart ready for the, to serve. You got to get, oh, glory, have mercy. Uh, part of the problem with the lazy man, Amen. Not only does he not want to do heals, amen, glory, have mercy, yes, help us today, amen. He sure enough don't want to what? Do somebody else's, amen. And a lot of us, amen, we're worse than the lazy man. We're trying to plow somebody else's field, somebody else's heart, when what? Our own hearts need to what? To be prepared. Mm. Oh, tell somebody, say, spend more time oh, God. preparing your own heart. Don't Jesus. neglect your own heart. Amen. Glory. Hammer. Because God wants to deal with you what? First. Hey, Jesus. glory. Hammer. Before you start good, dealing Pastor. with somebody else. Yes. Amen. So, so we find here in the last part of the text, verses 30 through 34. Amen. We find that uh, 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 we can profit by observing what? The lazy man, amen. Uh, and we found that the lazy man is what? He's neglectful. He's lazy. He doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to do what's necessary. He's neglecting his duties. He's neglecting essential things that should be done. Somebody say, you you, 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 you about to take note. Jesus. Amen. On, on the slowful man, amen. And somebody say, just be not like what? 
the slothful man. Amen. So there was 10 other things that we as the, the wise children of God uh, should have. Amen. That we should walk in because they are what? Practical things that we can do in this life that yes, we live can. as Christians. Amen. Amen. It's practical to have no respect of person yes. because the truth fits everybody. Yes, it does. Yes, Amen. It does. Glory. Yes. Have mercy. Amen. It's practical not to call the wicked righteous. Amen. Oh, glory. Have mercy. It's practical to rebuke the wicked. Amen. People won't do right sometimes unless you what? Rebuke oh, them. Amen. Amen. You living a life all the time. Glory. Have mercy. It does speak volumes, but there are times when you have to speak uh, uh, with this mouth of yours on that the what that's wrong amen oh uh, uh, and we can start what by we can start that in our own lives amen we got people that we know right now that are living in sin amen and every time they come to see you you talk about oh hallelujah bless the name of the Lord. You all say, oh, hallelujah. God is frowning upon the wicked. God is frowning on that which is wrong. Amen. You know, I was looking the other day, amen, and I read this here, and it was just wrong. I don't care what they say. It was just wrong. See, if we just tell people the truth, Oh, God. Amen. They might come out of some of the wickedness, what, yes. that they're doing. Yes. Amen. They might not like you for saying it. Amen. But tell somebody, I'd rather for you not to like me and, and make it to heaven than yes. to love me and go to hell. Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory. Right, much. Let's go on. Amen. It, it's practical, practical for us as Christians, amen, to rebuke the wicked ways of this world, amen. Mm -hmm. It's practical for as Christians, what, to give the right answers simply because what, we know that the right answers come from God. Right. They're in the word of God, which we are what, studying, which we are meditating, which we are reading, which we are living, which we are desiring, which we are wanting. See, it's practical to make plans for work. Amen. Glory. Hammer. And it's practical to build after we what? Make the plans. Amen. When the plans are completed. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You know what? This, this might sound crazy, but I was thinking about this make plans for work and, and build after plans are complete. It would be crazy for me, amen, uh, 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 let's just say before we bought this house, amen, it would have been crazy for me to come over here and mow this lawn. <laughs> amen, glory, amen, to mow a lawn that what, that had not been completed. It, 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 look, glory, amen, let the plans be done, let the house be built, and then what? Coming more, nevertheless, amen, go in. Uh, so somebody say, uh, uh, it's practical for us what? To make plans for the work, amen. And it's practical for us, practical for us to build after the plans, what? Are completed, amen. It's practical for us not to, uh, 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 glory, amen, to witness against a neighbor without cause. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You can't go in and tell somebody, uh, uh, yeah, he stole it, but you didn't see him steal it. Uh oh, glory. Hammer. Somebody say that that's that, that that that's a witness against a neighbor without cause. Without a cause. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Glory. Uh, uh, it's practical for us as Christians to to be not deceitful with our lips. Amen. Somebody say God called us to speak what? The truth, amen. So, so if we're speaking the truth, there, there's no deceiving. If we're speaking the truth, there's no conniving. If we're speaking the truth, it's the truth, amen. Uh, uh, it's practical, practical for us, amen, to not repay evil for evil, amen. Why? Because we're walking in grace. We're walking in mercy, amen. We're we're walking uh, with the thing that was what given unto us amen mm -hmm. jesus gave us what mercy he, he gave us gave what us grace amen why because we needed it why because we weren't always righteous we weren't always holy we we had some stuff going on y'all so uh somebody said thank god for mercy jesus. thank god for grace amen and so it's practical for us as christians not to repay evil for evil and last in this 24th chapter of Proverbs, amen. It's practical for us to learn 
from the lazy man. Hmm? It's practical for us to profit by observing the lazy man. There you go. It would teach us what? Not to be neglectful of the things of God. Amen? Amen. That's the 24th chapter of Proverbs. A practical way by which we as the people of God, the children of God, the saints of God can live. Amen. And, and God is call, calling us to, to live holy and righteous and to live by, excuse me, by his word. Amen. By his judgment, by his statutes. Amen. And they are all found in the word of God. Amen. 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 Thank God for the word of God tonight. Thank God for the book of Proverbs. Thank God for this 24th chapter. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, saints, uh, that's, that's, that's it for tonight. The 24th chapter of Proverbs. The practical way we, the people of God, uh, this Christian life. Tell somebody, say, I'm going to change tonight. I'm going to live this word of God because it is practical. Amen. And if we just do it, the Bible tells us what? Well, we'll be blessed. And you want to be blessed? Be found. There was not, Pastor. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Well, uh, um, on Sunday, I know First Lady Rose got prayer list. Um, Amen. Well, uh, Amen. Well, um, on Sunday, I know First Lady Rose the prayer list um, down on the screen, and I want us to pay attention to that because we should be praying for, for others, especially when they request it. Amen. So let's just let's, let's keep teaching in prayer. Let's keep the ministry in prayer. Let's keep the world we live in. In prayer, those that are in authority above us, let's, let's keep them in the prayer. Amen. Amen. Most of all, let's live this word of God to, to the fullest. Amen. Amen. Well, there's nothing else. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, God, for the word tonight, God. We thank you that, that Proverbs is a book of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But most of all, God, it's a practical way that we, your people, can live. And we thank you, God, for giving us that practical way. We thank you, God, for speaking your word in our ears. We pray, God, that we learn to write it on the tables of our hearts that we may not sin against you, God. Help us, God, each and every day to live this word to the fullest. Now, God, as we prepare to leave this broadcast, but never from your presence, we're asking, God, that you speak in us, through us, for us, and on our behalf, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, and in all things may we be found truly being a blessing unto your name. We thank you now, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we pray this prayer. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Man. Well, saints, we thank you for tuning in tonight. We pray that the word of God has blessed you. Amen. And, and I want you to just remember that it is a practical way for us as saints to live out the word of God. Uh, as they say, I never dog day you to try it. Amen. Uh, uh, the word of God. If you follow it, if you do it, if you live it. Amen. The Bible has already, already promised us that you shall be blessed. Amen. Well, until we see you again, as always. We're asking you to be thankful, to be blessed, and to be 